hello and welcome to this edition of Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Clarkson. Glad you joined us today. We have a fascinating uh, book to look at and an author. And this is Dr. Doug Stoffer, And we want to welcome you, Doug, to our program today. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to meet you, get to know you, and really looking forward to a great program today. Well, you are uh, somewhat of a published author with about 10 or so books already under your belt with your credit. And this is a, a new one, and we're going to be talking about it. It's called Daily Strength. Devotions for Bible Believing Study. And this is volume one yes. of uh, four to come, right? Right. Well, what's unique about this uh, book? Well, that's a good question. It's really, it's not just a devotional. It's a, it's a Bible study. So when the family gets together, what they'll do is uh, open it up. They'll read an introductory section, read the scripture first. And then uh, it has questions. It has prayer requests. has a song you can sing. It's just not the fluffy type of, uh, devotional that's out there it's a it's a it's a pretty meaty thing but yet it's easy to read easy to follow um, we're real excited about it because it's actually been five years in the work this is the first volume uh, right now and uh, we're just looking forward to we've, we've already pre-sold some so we've got a readership out there already well I'm interested Doug and not only from just the aspect of God's word uh, for all aspects of life but you have been a guest speaker at prophecy conferences and you are something of a of a student of prophecy and the Lord's return. So I'm sure that that shows in this writing, too, at times. But um, I want to mention to our viewers, we're having another prophecy conference coming March 5th, 6th and 7th, 2015. You can go to our website, Prophecy in the News, and register for that. Um, but we just want to uh, mention that and give you that opportunity. Coming back to the book at hand, let me give a couple of uh, scriptures that occurred to me. As I looked about daily strength and your testimony is probably going to be like mine. The foundation of my life and ministry has been time in the word of God. And Jesus, you know, was in the wilderness fasting 40 days led by the spirit. And the tempter came to him and said, turn these, you know, rocks, stones into bread. And Jesus answered from Deuteronomy 8 when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Right. And that's what that's what it's all about. I mean, we our devotional that we have right there. It's about the word of God. It's uh, it starts off with scripture. Sometimes we'll put four or five different scripture references in there that people can look up. So it really depends on what they want to do. It'll make a statement and then it'll give the four or five references. And if they want to do a little bit more study, they can. Otherwise, it's just like a footnote, a Bible footnote. People ask me when my first book, why I didn't have any footnotes? I said, well, I have 1,800 scripture references. I said, to me, I'm not footnoting man. I'm footnoting there God. There you go. There you and go. And that's what we tried to do in this book, too. How, how long has this been in the make? Uh, five years. Uh, my pastor, Andrew Ray, um, he wrote them initially, uh, but he didn't have the wherewithal to get them published. So I got involved with him, and uh, he was, I said, well, we can do in March of next year. And he said, we need to really have them out before the end of the year because people could start them at the beginning of the year if they'd like to. And so I got on him and started writing and boy, he just was sending them to me, you know, just quick. And so I, I got to writing them and, and, and did them in my style and format because this is my 10th book. Uh, so I have a readership out there. People want to read what I've got because I write in a very simple fashion. They're meaty. But the English language is something that, you know, God's really sort of gifted me in in writing. Yes. And so I rewrite my stuff 10, 20, 30 times. Do you really? I do. And then but that takes forever. So you labor over this. I do. There, I prayerfully and in actual work. And then when I get done, I actually get them in my inbox every day and I read them for months earlier and I get a blessing from. Them. So that's just God. Because by that time it's kind of moved on and you're on something else. And right. So it kind of refreshes when it pops back. And yes, uh, that's great. That's great. Well, I know as we talk about this, um, what would you say would be uh, one of the uh, incorporations of Bible study in this? You've already mentioned. But as you as you take a day by day approach, kind of how is that falling out? Well, what you, the way that the book is laid out and this thing is so fresh, all we have is the. Uh, is the one copy this this is going to press this as, is going, we speak. as we speak it'll be finished uh, actually in three days it'll be finished over the weekend and and, and come out but uh, like this one's diligence right here this is chapter 11 I just 
um, just turn to it. Diligence continued, so it's the second week. All right. It says occurrences found 38 times in the Old Testament, 24 times in the New Testament. The first usage is Matthew 2, 7, diligently. The last usage is Zechariah 6, 15, the same word. Interesting fact, Deuteronomy mentions diligence 10 times, second only to Proverbs. One's daily spiritual walk should focus on the implementation of diligence. And of course, in the first week, which was the week previous to this, chapter 10, week 10, uh, we defined it a little bit more, and you know, so, so it's building on that. Then we have a Bible study tip. Some people struggle with gaining additional biblical understanding by failing to obey current scriptural knowledge, Psalm 119, 100. If you're struggling with gaining new understanding, consider whether or not you've obeyed what you presently understand. Just a simple, straightforward study tip. And we have those in the beginning of each week. So there's 52 study tips, which we call bonus study tips in the book. So uh, again, pretty excited. The next section tells what's going to be in the week. In this case, it's church day. We don't do a devotional. All we do is do a scripture on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Monday is the benefits of diligence. The sin of procrastination is Tuesday. Church night on Wednesday, we don't, we just put a verse in there. Uh, consider the ant is uh, Thursday. There's a lion in the way is Friday, and I have finished my course on Saturday. So it just lays out, and then you, oh, you know, that's good. turn the page, and it starts the, the Sunday, Monday, and so on. So even those titles kind of intrigue you. Uh, there's a lion in the way. I, I haven't looked at it, but is it you the know. proverb that talks about the, the sloth that said there's a lion in the streets, and yes. he, he won't even raise his hand or go? Right. Okay. Right. That's good. That's what diligence is all about. You know, so and, and again, you as a pastor, mm -hmm. you would have a greater grasp of just the title would speak volumes to you. Uh, whereas a lot of people might not be familiar with that. Passage. So they can go find out. They go find out. And then, you know, they uh, they say, hey, pastor, look at what I learned today and look how I've been studying my Bible. And this thing isn't an end all. One of the things we right. struggled with when saying a devotion is you just study this and you're finished for the day. What we've tried to do is say it's a Bible study. It is a springboard mm -hmm. to spring people into more Bible study because that's what's important is to get people grounded in the Word of God so they can grow and mature in Christ because that's what it's all about from our perspective. So the ones I've heard you mentioned uh, both here and, and in our own conversation uh, have to do with character traits. Is that consistent throughout the, the patterns of the books or is that just uh, in certain times. Well, let me look here and um, and just go into. Uh, I should be able to find it here. Well, what I've got is the table of contents here, and some of the subjects we have are compassion, contentment, courage, wise decisions, faithfulness, diligence, discernment, discretion, endurance, equity, faith, forgiveness, friendship, kindness. Uh, truthfulness, humility, and that's about halfway through the book. Okay, okay. Well, we're used to you writing doctrinal and historical books. This is uh, seems to be very practical. Now, how, do, how does the reader uh, family looking at this take this and move it into practice? Well, and that's, you know, that's, that's fair. Uh, I write uh, pretty heavy doctrine books. I mean, I've been known for that. And this was my pastor's vision. And without a vision, the people perish. That's right. what my... That's what my pastor, Andrew Ray, had. And so he started them and he got me involved. And I said, you know, we could probably co-author a book. And he said, yes, let's do it. So I started getting involved in it. And it has helped me tremendously because as I'm writing it, um, I'm learning. You know, so diligence, you know, he's defined it. He's so I'm getting this free Bible study uh -huh. while I'm doing the book. So it's been very beneficial to me as somebody that's been in the ministry 30 years and an evangelist 14 years and have written 888 page books. Uh, this wow. has been a learning tool for me. That's amazing. Well, uh, it's good to hear that because God's word ultimately isn't just to inform. It's to transform our right. lives. And so, you know, uh, I, I'm really glad to hear that. Just to mention again to our viewers, the name of Doug Stoffer's book is Daily Strength, Devotions for Bible-Believing Study. And I might mention to you, this is available from our bookstore, uh, from our website, Prophecy in the News, or you can look at the 800 number on your screen, and you can go there, and we're making this available now for a cost of $24.95 and shipping and handling. And tell us, uh, Doug, who's your target audience in mind when you write this? Well, and I would say... Um 
everybody and anybody. Uh, you've well, got that catches a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you've got families. You've got uh, individuals. You've got Bible studies. You might have a Bible study leader that says, you know, I want to use this. And in fact, they do. These studies have been out for a number of years. They're being rewritten and, and uh, reworked in, very, in a lot of different ways. But they've already been tested. They've already been tried. They've already been in Bible studies, homes. Individuals have used them. So that's our target audience is basically Christians that want to grow in the Lord. And we're going to try to help them do that. And your church has probably piloted some of this under your pastor's leadership. Yes, and it, they were, uh, we've got a website that gets about 10,000 hits a day, learnthebible.org. And those studies, the older versions, are on there. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a matter of making money. What the practical part is having the book is we have a lot more features in there that aren't on the daily things that have gone out. And... There's the book in your hands. It's easy to handle. It's a hardback. It's going to last. Uh, you have a place in the back to take notes that you don't have, you know, from the Internet. But right. they're on the <laughs> Internet, and we don't have a problem with that. We want people to get the Word of God. We're just going to try to give it to them in a tool that is um, just easier to handle, and uh, we know it will work. I mean, this isn't my first rodeo, so... Uh, right, right. I know that people want the book because of historically that's what they've asked me to do. Well, as you said, they can springboard into some deeper Bible study. But if someone were to use this as a beginning point, uh, what kind of time frame are they going to find themselves in with this, do you think? Um, well, they can use it at any time of the year. Uh, you can start in June, whenever. Um, but it has, uh, it's laid out, you know, Sunday is just a verse. Monday, Tuesday is a study. Wednesday's a verse, Thursday, Friday, Saturday's a study, and then you start the next week. And in that next week, it has those overview things. Here's an interesting fact. Here's a mm -hmm. Bible study tip. So it has all of those things in there by week. Uh, but the daily thing is a, uh, it's a repetitive thing. It's the same format each week. And I mean, I had somebody call me the other day, said, uh, I want to order a copy of the hardback because we've been using these for three years. And I said, well, that's fantastic. And I, of course, tell my pastor that because it's encouraging to him to know that all this labor, all this effort that he's put years into it, that I've only put six months into it. Uh, but it's been six grueling months because it's been a <laughs> lot of work getting this thing done. But uh, it, it really has paid off for him because he has, an, he has more of a national and international audience through the Internet. Uh, like I said, the website gets about 10,000 hits a day. So... Uh, and it's all going to be revamped in the next six months. So it's, it's a, just a tremendous outreach. We're real excited about it, of course. Well, you've given us a sampling of some of the subjects, but uh, what are some of the special features that stand out um, in, in each chapter as they look at it? Well, like I said, you have the Bible study uh, notes. Uh, I just picked up another um, just randomly. This is page 158 on faith. The shield of faith, and it has the scripture. Um, Ephesians 6 10 and again remember this thing is not in print yet is why I've got this loose leaf copy uh, verse 11 put on the whole armor of God verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith um, Christians in every age have faced varied battles ranging from small skirmishes skirmishes to life ending combat mm. God's word tells the believer to equip himself as a good soldier of Jesus Christ by putting on the whole armor of God this armor enables those engulfed in the battle to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Apostle Paul identifies this armor and the importance of every element. Interestingly, as he refers to the shield of faith, he suggests taking it above all. Faith, though often overlooked, remains a crucial element within the saint's spiritual arsenal. The Bible drives home this truth by pointing out that the shield of faith can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Without faith, the believer stands exposed and vulnerable. It is utterly impossible to be strong in the Lord apart from a steadfast faith in God and his word. While the sword, the Bible, works on the offense, faith protects and shields. That's an example that you would read to your children um, or to a Bible study group. And then you go into the devotional thoughts. I'll give you an example for yeah, children. Please. Jesus quoted by the, the Bible back to the devil when he tried to get him uh, to do wrong. What Bible verse could you use if the devil sought to get you to disobey mom or dad? Okay. And see Colossians 3.20. So we give it to him. Uh, then this is for everyone, a devotional thought. Today's passage likens faith to a shield. In what ways do you think faith works like a shield in the life of a believer? 
A shield held by a warrior protects him from external and internal injuries. How does the shield of faith protect the believer? Getting people to think about what they've just read, what they just studied. And, you know, it, it's time that, uh, you know, the parents can spend with their children and talk to them about um, the shield of faith. And not just that, but all of these subjects. And there'll be four years of them. So, I mean, you know, you're looking at four years of, of study that you can do with a family. People are always looking for things. You mentioned that you yeah. did. We were on the road as an evangelist homeschooling our children. And yours were going in how many different directions? Yeah, nine. Nine different directions. Mine were only four. We were in the motorhome or in the trailer and traveling. But, you know, you travel, you get there, you preach, you do it again and again. You know, it was tough. I would love to have had something like this with my family. I tried lots of different things. And, of course, we went from just an open Bible, a reading, which doesn't work good with a squirming three-year-old, uh, to finding some aids like you've put together and they they really can help if they're aimed at their ages like this yes so that's a great great thing well what's an example of a bible study tip uh, well and, and again we um let me just you know open up to a page <laughs> just pick one and uh here's here's one right here and hopefully i won't mess up the book the way it's set out uh bible study tip on week 32 the the subject is meekness but the bible study tip won't always go in with that pay close attention to those old testament passages quoted in the new testament the differences in wording usually provide new insights into the meaning of the Old Testament word or passage. So when you look at the Old Testament and then look at the New Testament where it's quoted, sometimes one word will be changed and it'll give you the definition of the Old Testament word or even vice versa. So that's a Bible study tip that's in week 32. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, tell me some um, thoughts about the four-year plan and uh, is it going to... Does it follow a definite track? Does it, does it follow topics like this? Is there an overarching theme? And, and I don't have all of the, um, the title, you know, the, the uh -huh. subjects for the second volume. But like in uh, week 32, I just turned it over to the last page. Because in this, we have uh, notes for the, any blank pages that we had. They can, they can sit there and they can write out notes. Um, then at the end, we have volume 2 and the week. 52 the subject is praise so we'll put about three or four quotes from the next volume when a man begins to praise himself he does so in direct rebellion to the words and directions of god proverbs 27 2 praise is the natural overflowing of affection that occurs when one individual views some positive quality in another men praise god because they find his attributes and actions worthy of worship next one uh, and these are just different days in week 32, volume 2. Though the praise of men can never reach to the height of God's worth, God still chose to inhibit, to inhabit the praise of his people, Psalm 20 22, verse 3. So, again, this is, you know, this is Bible study. This is not simple, you know, we're doing a devotion and then it's an end all. Mm -hmm. This is saying, well, you want to understand praise, let's go into the Bible, define it. Let's go into the Bible and find out uh, not only the definition, but how it's used. Uh, you know, what's the first usage? Because many times um, the first usage is the definition. And by the way, we use the Bible to define the words. I used to use a Webster's 1828 dictionary. Fine. But what I found, especially with Good. my pastor, was he said and he showed me in many different places where the Bible defines itself over and over and over again. So what I've tried to do is, is sort of use that in my Bible study where um, I use the Bible to define the Bible. Yes, and you had a phrase there, first usage. Right. And that's actually like a hermeneutical law. But when you find the first mention of something in the Bible, you really need to stop and perk your ears up and say, what is this telling us here? Because it's going to track on through. Right. That's right. good. I'd be curious as some of the things mentioned uh, concerning prayer. Uh, after a particular uh, devotion you had on Thanksgiving. Um. And, uh, and there is, there's patience. I'm looking right here at um, peace. I think prayer's coming right up. Prudence. So these are alphabetized. Somewhat. Purity. Um, they're, um, they're alphabetized, but sometimes they go out. If, if we feel like there's a better definition for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think prayer is in the um, second volume because I don't see it right okay. here. Tender-hearted Thanksgiving. Well, uh, you mentioned Thanksgiving. I think that we just 
have had that time of year recently. And sure. Uh, the audience of our Thanksgiving, uh, Psalm 35, 18, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. That's the verse. And then it goes through and you got your devotional thoughts uh, for Monday. Um, devotional uh, prayer thoughts. Uh, Friday is a time of Thanksgiving. Um, let me look at... Uh, and then Saturday is let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, Psalm 107, verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord. Um, introductory thoughts, as many believers are unfamiliar, are familiar with the phrase, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, but far too few consider its immediate context in Scripture. As the Lord's children, we are to say so. But what are we to be saying? Believers are to offer thanks to the Lord continually, speak of His goodness and mercy. Oftentimes the Bible admonishes God's people to give thanks unto God for his mercy, especially those who have been redeemed by, from the hand of the enemy, Psalm 107.2. We also need to give thanks to God because of his redeeming mercy, Psalm 136, verses 1, 2, 3, and 26. One who is redeemed can best say so by giving God thanks. Let others know you are not ashamed to belong to God and that you are truly grateful for his working in your life. And again, if you can imagine sitting around a table with your children and you're using this to, to teach them and say, look, this is what thankfulness is. I tell, I told my children all the time, you know, how about a thank you? You know, uh -huh. and I would uh -huh. like to, I, I wish I had this study there. Um, I just noticed the scripture index. I, th I think I'll look at that next because uh, it's pretty extensive. Um, how many pages? 445 to... Uh, 455 so over 10 pages of two columns and if you like if you want to go do a study uh, numbers 12 1 page 277 numbers 12 3 275 76 283 so you could pick a chapter and find your references there and right go or see. vice versa uh -huh. you can find a ref you know the reference and you can go find the study for that particular reference so let's say you're studying in the book of Joshua you want to know do we have anything on Joshua 6 you can go back in the back, look at it, and it'll take you to the study for that particular week. So it isn't something that has to be studied week by week. That's how it's designed. Mm -hmm. But also, I guess I get back to my doctrinal thing. Uh, it's also a doctrinal book, so you can go look up the scripture and then study the passage if you have a question on a particular scripture. Uh, but that's 10 pages, double, you know, two columns. Um, I haven't counted them. I know in many of my other ones, um, I have 1,800 scripture references. That's probably pretty close to 1,800 uh, scripture references in that book also. So does the person have to wait till January to start this? No, I, I think you can start any time at all. Uh, if somebody bought this in, in uh, well, in fact, it starts a couple days before January because we know people make New Year's resolutions. There you go. So we start them the Sunday <laughs> before New Year's saying, don't wait for New Year's. That's our philosophy. Our philosophy is, look, we don't want you to get caught up in a New Year's resolution that you're going to lose one week after the same way you did with your diet. You know, right. Don't do that. Let's start before New Year's. And for those that pick it up in March, go from March to March, you know, and then start the next one in March to March or double up. Right. There's nothing saying you have to just do one a day because these are written to where uh, they're not going to be boring to the children. Uh -huh. uh, three-year-old, we can't guarantee anything. You know, you mentioned your three-year-old. You know, right. we can't guarantee anything holding a, a three-year-old's attention. But uh, we know that the teenagers, uh, we have teens that use them now. Uh, we know that teenagers will do it. We know that families will do it. We know that Bible studies gr groups will use it. Um, so we believe in it. Um, and I'm excited because I'm already working on week eight. And you wonder, well, how do you get the quotes in there for the second volume? What we did was we took a couple of quotes out. We rewrote those and included them in here. So then they're going into it as we work on it week by week. I'm in week eight right now in volume two. I uh, worked, worked on two weeks while I was on the plane to fly out here. Okay. So Good. I will. You're on, diligent. Yes. On Wednesday, I will work on two more weeks as I fly to California. So it's... Um, I stay busy. I mean, I just, I don't, I redeem the time. I don't want to sit back and say, you know, I've done enough. I've been busy. I'm getting older. I want to just Amen. relax and retire. My retirement is give me something, Lord, to work on. Well, that's great. That's great, Doug. I, I just want to say, you know, personally, too, um, 
what a tool this is and just the importance of people being in the word of God and individually of course but do you know if you have a family or if you're a couple even with an empty nest uh, I know couples in my church I have some couples in their 80s and they still open the Bible and pray together every morning that's wow. how they start their day and they come up and tell me we prayed for you today and you know they're praying uh, for lots of things every day but you know that has a way of knitting our hearts together and uh, I heard evangelist Jerry Pipe say a few years ago that a lot of kids that walk away from their faith when they're older it's a tragedy but you see the ones who stay with it and the one thing that kept it uh, real in the lives of those who have stayed with it was that they saw in their parents and authenticity and it wasn't a Sunday only thing it was that mom and dad really took this seriously right and this this helps people do that we hope so and that's that's what we're all about um, I'll give you an example in our church um, I had a, a friend in New York that was putting on a, a youth uh, outing or youth conference 2,000 young people were there and I took two of our young people there. We had seven young people in our church that memorized all of First Timothy. Wow. All six chapters, word for word. And at the end of the year, they're doing First Peter now, all five chapters. We took them to New York and they quoted it verbatim. We had two of them do it in, in unison. So it was pretty Fantastic. interesting. Fantastic. That's amazing. Well, our guest has been Doug Stoffer, And we thank him for encouraging us to believe the timeless word of God. Because Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Till then, let's keep looking up. Hello, I'm Dr. Kevin Clarkson. Excited to invite you to the second annual Orlando Prophecy Summit. It's taking place this March 5, 6, and 7, 2015. And I'd love for you to be our guest. It's going to be in sunny Orlando, Florida, as I mentioned. We have an incredible lineup of speakers for you this year. The New York Times bestselling author, Jonathan Kahn, will be there. And his brand new book is breaking the record set by his first book, The Harbinger. And Bill Solace has made the forgotten prophecies of the Bible come back to life. Psalm 83 and Jeremiah 49 are prophecies that were written for our times. Paul McGuire wowed the crowds in Colorado Springs with his presentation. Paul will definitely be having something new and exciting up his sleeve for us in Orlando. These are just a few of the prophecy experts that are going to be with us. You can register, and the cost is only $90, and these three days of exciting teaching are going to be available to you by calling 1-800-475-1111.